All right. Hello, everyone. Day 37 of my carnivore diet. It's the 6th of February. It's Tuesday. And I was out all day today. Got up super early in the morning or earlier than normal. It's not like 4 a.m., but earlier than I normally get up. Um, got out of the house quite early and had to make my way to Cambridge. What was interesting is that I did what I said I was going to do yesterday, which is I just got up, got ready, got out of the house, got to the um, train station, had a flat white, so tiny, and a very small one, actually. It's more like a Cortado, actually. So just a two shots with a little bit of milk in it, um, which was quite nice, actually. And then I went, when I got to London, I just stopped it the McDonald's in the station and just got, um, what do they call? Why can't I ever remember? I can remember it every time except when I'm trying to film and then I can't remember. Um, but anyway, um, the sausage and egg McMuffin, that's the one, but I got with the double sausage. So I had one of those, obviously didn't eat the bread, which was fine. And that was actually nice. And that tied, tided me over for quite a while. When I got to Cambridge, I stopped in a grocery store because there's one at the station. I picked up some stuff to have for lunch later because I knew there wasn't going to be anything. And I'm really glad that I did because there literally wasn't anything that I could have eaten at the at the venue. Um, what I what I was able to get because I was looking for something with a bit of fat in it. And because everybody so, oh, my God, it's got fat in it. Um it's difficult because even like the chicken and everything, they take the skin off. Like it's really difficult to get stuff with actually fat on it. So what I did do is they had some cheese that was wrapped in some pepperoni, um, but more like chorizo. So actually kind of real Spanish chorizo. So that was quite spicy and it was a bit of cheddar cheese. So that was okay. And, but that was quite high in fat. So that was good. So I was like, right, okay, well that'll offset some of the chicken. And I got some ham as well. And I got two hard boiled eggs. So as the day went on, at lunchtime, I had the, the cheese things. And then I had the chicken on the way home and the ham on the way home. And do you know what I mean? So it was like I was actually able to eat some stuff during the day, which was quite nice. And I did. I had a few peanuts as well, just because I was quite... Um, I wanted something with some different texture, but very, very few. And I haven't had any peanut butter now in a few days, which has actually been really good because the peanut butter was the first step to stop having the peanut butter. And then I'll, I'll I'm, I'm probably always going to have some peanuts. It's just a good snack food for me. And if I need maybe some texture, they're easy to carry around and they're nice to have. I could get some beef jerky as well, which might be an option. But what's interesting is I found a lot of the beef jerky has sugar in it. And some of the some of it has a lot of sugar in it. So there's some biltong that you can get in the UK that's very natural, has very, very few um, ingredients in it, but it does have a little bit of sugar. And that's kind of the best one, but it's hit and miss whether you can find it or not. So um Maybe what I'll do is I'll try and the next time I go to the store where I find it, I'll just buy a few packs of it and keep them. The other thing, once it's been open for too long, it, it gets like it's tough to begin with. But if you keep it open, it gets even tougher. So I'll need to look at that as well. But numbers for today um, went down a little bit again today. So back down 95.6, which was good. My sleep was actually terrible last night I should probably talk about that I haven't woken up in the in the night as I mentioned a few times I haven't really tossed and turned and woken up in the middle of the night in a long time and I had a terrible night sleep last night I went to bed late which is my fault and then I don't know maybe two o'clock in the morning or something I woke up and I could smell like cooking which was really weird. And I was like, why is someone, it's like the middle of the night. Why is someone cooking? And it smelled like somebody was like, the only thing I could 
think of that it smelled like was maybe like a beef Wellington or something. And then I started to panic and I'm like, oh my God, did I leave the stove on? <laughs> so, I, so, I, I, so I got out of bed. I went downstairs. Of course, nothing was on. And I couldn't smell it when I got up and got out of the bed. Like it was just the weirdest thing. And yeah, I just, I, I just wasn't really sure kind of like what was going on. Now, I don't know if that's some weird psychological thing that my mind did because I thought that I cheated and, you know, had some KFC and that that was bad somehow. And I don't know, maybe that was playing on my mind. Maybe the fact that I was emceeing this event today and I always get a little bit a little bit nervous when I do that sort of thing, even though it was totally fine. Um, maybe that was playing on my mind a little bit. I, I don't know, but I had a, it seemed to me like I had a really bad night's sleep. Technically, the watch thinks that my sleep score wasn't too bad and that it was good um, coming in at 75. But I've been in the, the 80s and 90s, so I don't know. I don't know what to believe. I feel like I didn't get much sleep and it was broken and, yeah, it was just unusual. So I don't know. Um Nearly 10,000 steps to date, though, so that was good. I didn't go to the gym, but I got all my steps in and some. So that was good. Calories were pretty normal. A lot of people have yelled at me. Not yelled, but a lot of people have said, ah, don't count calories. You shouldn't count calories. Calories, calories, calories. And I wanted to talk about that because, again, I've and I've talked about my spreadsheet that I do many times already and i will keep talking about it so that people understand why i do what i do but i get up and i weigh myself every day and i log how many steps i take at a very base minimum i i weigh myself i count my steps during the day and i count my calories and i count my exercise because individually they don't on a day-to-day -day basis they don't really mean anything and I don't get hung up over the numbers like I said before I used to, but I don't anymore. It is just a number. And now it more makes me curious to understand what the relationship is between the numbers. And then I have a notes column as well. So I, I keep track of anything unusual happens or you know, maybe I have a drink, I, you know, I'm out after work and I might have a drink or I have a couple glasses of wine or I'll have this or that. And I make a note of it in my notes column so that when I go back and look at it later, what I'm trying to do is understand is, can I see any pattern in that? And I know, you know, there's, there's correlation and causation and, and they're two different things. And I get that. And literally I, we were talking about this all day, talking about data, but it can be an indicator. And sometimes it tells me, like I know from having watched myself and looked at the data in my spreadsheet over three years, if I go out and I drink a glass of wine or two glasses of wine, I will gain a kilo overnight. I just do. It's, it's water weight. I'm not putting weight on, I'm just retaining water. But it's something that I know that when I drink alcohol, I'm going to retain water. So the next day, I know pretty much almost guaranteed that my weight will go up by a kilo and it'll be two two days and then it'll be back to where it was before. But I would never have actually really worked that out. And to know that alcohol has that effect on me if I hadn't had the spreadsheet and hadn't been paying attention to what's going on. So again, this is what the macros are for and this is, you know, why why I keep track of this stuff, because I'm looking for trends. The other reason is because somebody in the comments made a comment about um, rabbit starvation, which I'd never heard of. And so I looked it up and it's basically when you eat too much protein and you don't have enough fat that the, the protein can essentially start to poison you. And What's good about keeping track of the macros like I'm doing at the minute is that if I look down the columns, I can see how many fat grams and how many protein grams I ate every day based on me just putting my food in. So it's more than just counting the calories. It's looking at those macros as well. 
And I can tell you that the averages are, it's basically one to one. So, you know, if I have like one day I had 108 fat, 112 protein, I had 104 fat, 116 protein, 120 fat, 136 protein, 105, 124. So I can look at the numbers and I can go, well, actually, that's like a one to one ratio, which which is probably enough. I'm I'm not gonna get in that situation. I'm not having 20, 30 grams of fat and 180 grams of protein. So I think by having that information available, when somebody comes and asks me a question or you know, I read something and I start to go, Oh my god, am I having too much protein? I I can just go and look. I it's not a question that I have to worry about because I have the data. It's not like I now have to start thinking about what I'm doing. I've just done it ahead of time. So anyway, that's a really long winded sort of explanation into why I keep track of the stuff I keep track of. I actually keep track of a whole lot more than that. I've got a lot of personal things in my life that I keep track of aside from just this stuff. So it's almost like a life journal um, if you really want to break it down that way. So there's, there's some other things that I am personally concerned about that I keep track of, but it's not related to this. So there's, I won't go into it, but everything BMI. Um, and I, I look at how much protein I'm supposed to have or how much protein I want to have based on my weight. And then I can also compare that as well. So I'm generally a little bit under, but not too far. So I'm happy with that as well. So anyway, long story short is, I think it's really valuable to know for me, but I'm a person who's worked with data and who really is interested in the data and likes to see and try and find patterns and see if there are patterns. But I also like it in case I need to look back for some reason, or if my physio asks me a question or my doctor asks me a question, I have some additional information that I can look at and say, well, actually here are the numbers over the last six weeks. I can tell you what I've been doing. And a lot of times that's been useful. So there you go. And that's why I talk about them. So <clears throat> I don't know if they're interesting for anybody else. They're, you know, marginally interesting for me. Um, but yeah, tell me in the comments what you think. I don't know. Again, I, like I said in my monthly update, if anybody wants um, a copy of the spreadsheet, I will create one. Um, that you can use, that you can use to track if you want that. And if you leave in the comments, if you track other things that you think are important, um, let me know. I used to track all my exercises separately. So I would track, I would track running, walking, rowing machine, elliptical, e-bike, um, all the different versions of cardio that I would do plus weights and then all the other stuff. And I've for 2024, I've slimmed that down. So I just have one column for cardio and one column for weights. And then I just, if I'm running, I keep track of my distance and my, my average mile time and my 5k time. Cause I don't generally run more than 5k. And that just gives me an indication again of how fit I am, how fast I'm running, how well I did. And then I make some comments about how I felt when I was running that. So when I get back up to like I haven't put anything in because I haven't run 5K yet this year. Um, but probably by the end of February, I'll be back to a point where I can do that. So um, I might start keeping track of that again. And yeah, so there we go. If you want a copy of the spreadsheet or if you want me to go through it in detail and show everybody, leave it in the comments and... That'll be something for me to have to figure out how to do like a picture in picture thing so I could maybe go through it at all together or I can use a different tool where I can do that. Uh, might not look the same, but it would it would accomplish the same thing. So I can do that. And if like if nobody comments on it, it's totally fine. I don't mind. I'm not going to have any hurt feelings because no one wants it because I realize I'm a bit special. So um, anyway. That's it for today. Sorry, that's a long one. Um, it's a lot longer than, than the normal ones, but hopefully there's been something useful in there. And um, yeah, back on track today, feeling good. Back in the office tomorrow should be a normal day. So hopefully I'm going to, oh, I'm, sorry. 
one last thing i'm gonna try in the morning i'm gonna try maybe mixing some of the i've seen a lot of people talk about cooking a bit of ground beef and then mixing the egg in with the ground beef kind of like a weird meat omelet so <laughs> i've never actually tried that i've mixed it i mix my eggs with loads of other stuff like chorizo or something spicy with some sausage um, but I might try that with some of the beef and see how that goes. So I might try that in the morning because I'm going to try and make some eggs. So if I try that tomorrow, I'll let you know how it goes. And uh, otherwise, look, everybody have a good evening out there. If you've stuck with me this long and, and you're interested in what's happening, then please hit the subscribe button and check in every once in a while and see how I'm doing. All right, everybody have a good evening. Good night.